Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's power move, we're gonna learn about how to create a new custom material in SolidWorks. And originally I made this video and it was like 15 minutes long, so this is gonna be the reshoot. I'm gonna try and chop this thing down to about five minutes. So here we go, here's the basics of how to create a new material in SolidWorks. When we go over to the tree and we right mouse button on an existing material and we choose edit material, we can see that SolidWorks is pointing to a materials database. If you hold your mouse here over SolidWorks materials, you can see the file extension is .sldmat. The problem with this materials database is that it is not editable, meaning when you click on any of these materials, everything over here in this list is gray. It, it cannot be edited. So what we need to do is create a new materials database. Now, this takes us into the topic of libraries in SolidWorks. So if we go into our system options here and we go down to file locations, we can see that everything we do in SolidWorks is really pointing to libraries, whether that's a library of your document templates or a library of your sheet format or a library of your weldment profiles. Everything that you're doing in SolidWorks is really pointing to a library, and it's from this location, system options, file locations, that you point to those libraries. So we're gonna point to a library here for our materials databases, and that location is gonna be found here. I'm gonna click add, and we're just gonna point to a new directory that's easy to get to. Personally, I like to manage all my libraries right out of the C drive, so C, Toby's SW libraries, and then you can see I've got all my different libraries mapped here. Like here's all my 2015 libraries. This is how I like to do it because it makes it easy for me to grab this whole folder and move it to a new computer. You can do it however you like. But I'm gonna go in here to my C drive, Toby's libraries, 2020 SolidWorks library. And I'm gonna make a new folder here called 2020 custom materials. So what we're doing here is we're just making a new folder so that SOLIDWORKS knows that when we make a new materials database, this is where it should look. And so I'm gonna say, okay. And now I'm gonna make that new materials database. So I'm gonna go over here to my existing material, right mouse button, edit material. And I'm gonna go to this uh, top level here and right mouse button on any of these folders and choose new library. And what are we creating here? We're creating a new .sldmat, a materials database. So we're gonna go into our C drive. We're gonna go into Toby's SW library. We're gonna go into 2020 SW library and custom materials. And what are we gonna call this? We'll call it Toby's custom materials. So now you see we've got a new .sldmat here. And also in that folder, you'll see that same thing has been created. If I go in here to custom materials, there's that Toby custom materials. So in that folder, you're gonna see that that database has been created. You'll notice here that the database is currently 2KB in file size. We'll come back and check on that in a minute. And so now over here on the left, we've got Toby's custom materials. And the way materials are organized in SolidWorks is the database, then the category, and then the individual materials. So we're gonna go to Toby's custom materials and we're gonna make a new category. We're gonna call this uh, nylon, nylons, we'll call it nylons. Put all of our custom nylons in there. And then in that, in that folder, we're gonna choose to make a new material. So we've got the material database, the category, and now right mouse button and make a new material. And we'll call this nylon 12. Now at this point, if we choose save down here, we're not applying that material to our part. What we're doing is we're just saving that material into the material database. And so we can see here that it jumped from 2K to 4K. So we're creating a new entry in the database, thus the database is growing. So what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna go through and we're gonna assign some custom material information like the uh, material density or Poisson's ratio or the elastic modulus. We're gonna assign some custom properties here. We could also assign maybe a description or a source of where we found this material information. And we can also assign a custom appearance. So over here where it says appearance, we could maybe go through our library of appearances here like in plastic, medium gloss, and then maybe I'll make this a medium gloss plastic and then I'll choose over here like this kind of purple color. And so I'm gonna choose save and that saves that information about nylon 12 to the uh, materials database. And here, if I choose apply, what this will do is apply this material to the SolidWorks part file. And if everything works, we should see the part file actually change colors. So I choose apply, look at that. It did indeed change color. And if we look at the mass here of this part, we can see it's currently at 606.6 grams so now we get to the final step which is 
how do we actually get the correct material properties? And there's a lot of good online resources you can turn to. The one that I use most commonly is MatWeb. MatWeb, your source for materials information. And what I do is I go to MatWeb and I go up here to the upper right and I search for the material that I'm looking for. So Nylon 12 is the material that I'm interested in. And you can see that there are 912 materials uh, that contain Nylon 12. So depending on, on uh, what other materials it's combined with or maybe how it's prepared, you're gonna get some different results. So I'm gonna choose the second one here, Flame Retardant Nylon 12. And then you have to ask yourself, what material properties are you interested in? What's the application? Like if you're doing simulation, then you might need, you know, like I said before, elastic modulus or tensile strength. If you're doing some type of a thermal study, then you would need the conductivity rate for that material. So for today, what I'm interested in is weight. I wanna see how much this part weighs and how it's gonna affect the overall assembly. So the only physical property I'm really interested in here is density. And you see that MatWeb gives it to us in a range. So um, one to 1.22 grams per cubic centimeter and 0.036 to 0.044 pounds per cubic inches. So it gives it to us in a range. So I'm gonna go back over here to my materials here and I'm gonna say edit material. And then this is just a little trick from a, a little trick from an old pro. Uh, the If you don't wanna do the conversion from uh, grams per cubic centimeter to kilograms per cubic meter, what you could do is you could just pull down this menu here and from this pull down menu, you could choose English IPS and that way you can use the uh, IPS value that's shown here. So just like a little pro tip if you don't feel like doing that conversion. A lot of you could probably do that conversion in your head so it's not that big a deal, but. Uh, so here I'm gonna say, I'll just kind of split the difference. So I'll just go with 0 0.040. Uh, pounds per cubic inch for that material density. So I'm gonna change this here. The mass density is gonna become 0 0.040. Uh, maybe here for the source, I would type in MatWeb. And then I'm gonna say save, which uh, writes that information to the database, but it has not yet applied that information here in the tree. You can see it's still 606.6. .6. So then I'm gonna choose apply. And look at that, the mass updated to 658. So it is now using the correct material, custom material, and the custom density that I input there. And then of course, if you wanted to go back to SI, you can just choose it there from that list. Save, close, and that is your power move on how to create and apply a custom material. And if you have any questions about this power move, let me know down below. If you like my style of teaching, maybe consider signing up for one of Two Tall Toby's training classes. We could talk all day about materials or whatever it is you're interested in. But of course, those training classes do follow a book and they have me as your live instructor. So twotalltoby.com slash training. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next Power Moves.